In 2009, George Sodini walked into a gym in Pennsylvania and opened fire, killing three women and injuring nine others before taking his own life. In his diary, Sodini wrote about his frustrations with women and his inability to find a girlfriend. In 2014, Elliot Roger killed six people in California before taking his own life. Like Sodini, Roger wrote extensively about his hatred of women and his frustration at being unable to find a girlfriend. In 2018, Alec Manassian drove a van into a crowd of people in Toronto, killing 10 and injuring 16 others. In a Facebook post before the attack, Manassian praised Roger and claimed that the incel rebellion had begun. The thread which tied these and other attackers together is a misogynistic, fatalistic belief system which allows them to feel they are victims. Incel is short for involuntary celibate, a term that's used to describe men who are unable to find sexual or romantic partners, despite their best efforts. While not all incels are violent, a small subset have become notorious for committing heinous acts of violence against women. Incel-inspired violence isn't just a North American issue. It is a worldwide phenomenon, as shown by the 2019 Halle Synagogue shooting in Germany, the 2020 stabbings in England, the 2021 Plymouth mass shooting in the United Kingdom, and the 2021 stabbings on a train in Japan. The first references to incels were in 2001, exploring involuntary celibacy among both partnered and single men and women. Over time, this original terminology and group has evolved into a male-focused group who excel at externalizing their personal and psychological issues and projecting the responsibility for them onto women. However, it wasn't until much later, after several fatal attacks, that academic and media attention focused on the issue. It is important to note that not all incels are violent or dangerous, but for a small subset, this culture of misogyny and entitlement can become toxic and lead to violent behavior. Demographically, most research characterizes incels as young, straight white men. However, a March 2020 membership survey from incels.co found that the online community is less monolithic, especially in terms of race. A minority of users post the majority of the hateful or violent content. Most of the available information about incel communities has been gathered from self-report surveys that do not assess for mental illness in a structured manner. However, in one study, 68% reported that they experienced depression. 74% reported experiencing constant anxiety and emotional distress. Roughly, two-thirds, 68% of the respondents reported having thoughts of suicide. Over a quarter, 29% of incels reported being on the autism spectrum. We must be cautious in connecting autism spectrum disorder and extremist beliefs given the lack of empirical data supporting such a connection, but it does warrant further study. While the rate of body dysmorphic disorder within the incel community is unknown, 60% of survey respondents reported considering plastic surgery for aesthetic improvement. There is evidence to suggest that there is a correlation between autism spectrum disorder and being an incel. In a study published in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders in 2020, researchers found that individuals who self-identified as incels were more likely to score higher on measures of autistic traits compared to the general population. The study also found that among incels, higher levels of autistic traits were associated with more negative attitudes towards women, increased loneliness, and decreased sexual experience. However, it is important to note that the vast majority of individuals with autism spectrum disorder are not incels. Not all incels exhibit autistic traits, and not all individuals with autism spectrum disorder identify as incels. One of the challenges in studying incels is that their ideology is complex and multifaceted. Although incel ideology is primarily defined by misogyny, their rhetoric also references racial language and racist stereotypes. This emphasis on race is a common characteristic of many extremist hate groups, including neo-Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan. Social media posts and manifestos written by members of the incel community frequently use disparaging racist language similar to that used by white supremacist groups when recruiting members. Incel ideology shares similarities with other insular groups such as the Men Going Their Own Way, Pickup Artist Hustlers, and the Proud Boys. Men Going Their Own Way advocates separating from society and women entirely and attributes the supposed destruction of Western society to feminism. The Proud Boys, on the other hand, 
is a white supremacist group that has built a platform based on white supremacy, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and anti-feminist rhetoric. There are similarities between incels and nihilistic cults. Both groups venerate members who have committed acts of violence as martyrs or saints. Language plays an important role in creating and reinforcing group identity. Groups often develop their own distinctive ways of speaking, including unique vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar that help to identify members of the group and distinguish them from outsiders. Argo is the term for a specialized or secret language used by a particular group of people, often as a way of excluding outsiders or creating and reinforcing group identity. Cells have been particularly fruitful in creating an Argo to both signal belonging to each other and exclude the other. We think it will be helpful to review some incel terminology. Incel, a portmanteau of involuntarily celibate, used to describe individuals who are unable to find sexual or romantic partners despite a desire to do so. Many incels believe that their lack of success in relationships is due to factors beyond their control, such as their physical appearance or social status. Normie, a term used to describe individuals who are seen as typical or average, and who do not experience the same struggles as incels. Many incels feel a sense of alienation from mainstream society and view normies as a privileged group. Chad, a term used to describe a stereotypical attractive, athletic, and sexually successful man. Chad is often used to contrast with incels who feel that they are not as physically attractive or socially successful as Chad's. Alpha, the opposite of a beta male, takes on risk and confrontation, is confident, a leader, high status, and attractive to women. Beta, a term used to describe men who are seen as less dominant or less successful than Chad's. Beta is often used to describe incels themselves, as well as other men who are seen as lacking in sexual prowess or social status. Sigma male, a lone wolf alpha male in the socio-sexual hierarchy. Simp, used to refer to men that are seen as deferring to or worshipping a particular woman or women in general. The term is commonly used outside of Manosphere forums, often to refer more broadly to supplicative behavior or those who venerate others, often in a sexual context. Stacy, used to describe a stereotypical, attractive, popular, and sexually desirable woman. Stacy is often used to contrast with incels, who feel that they are not able to attract women like Stacy's. Femoids, a derogatory term used to describe women. The term implies that women are objectified and dehumanized, reduced to mere objects of sexual desire. Foid, a derogatory term for a female. Femsel, a female incel. Lookism, a belief in the importance of physical appearance in social and romantic interactions. Many incels feel that their lack of success in relationships is due to their perceived unattractiveness, and as a result, they may be obsessed with looks and appearance. LMS, an acronym that stands for Looks, Money, and Status. Many incels believe that LMS are the most important factors in attracting romantic partners and may obsess over their perceived lack of these qualities. Face theory, face law, face. The theory that face is most important and overshadows all other qualities when it comes to dating. LDAR, an acronym that stands for lay down and rot. Many incels who have given up on finding romantic partners or improving their social status may adopt an LDAR attitude. NEAT an acronym that stands for not in education, employment, or training. Many incels may struggle with finding employment or engaging in meaningful social activities and may identify as NEATS. TFL, an acronym that stands for True Forced Loneliness. Many incels believe that their lack of success in relationships is due to societal factors, such as gender inequality or discrimination against unattractive men. TFL is often used to describe the feeling of hopelessness and despair that can result from this perceived lack of agency. Love shy, sometimes used by incels to describe themselves as individuals who are unable to find romantic partners due to shyness, anxiety, or social awkwardness. They often perceive this as an unfair and undeserved disadvantage in the dating world. Fuel, motivation for something. Life fuel, inspirational motivating induces warm emotions. Suicide fuel, depressing, demotivational. Max slash maxing an effort to improve an aspect of one's life to secure sexual and or romantic intimacy. Maximize it, used to denote self-improvement in general. Cope, adopting an untrue belief, 
to avoid the pain that comes from facing a harsh, unpleasant reality, but shelling, an incel coping mechanism intended to make sense of an unpleasant reality. Onitis, a term used to describe an obsession with a particular person, often a romantic interest. Many incels may develop an unhealthy fixation on a particular woman or women and view their inability to form a relationship with that person as a personal failing. Self-termination is often referred to as roping and factors worsening self-termination ideation as suifuel. The concept of different colored pills, such as the red pill and blue pill, originated in the 1999 movie The Matrix, in which the protagonist is given a choice between taking a red pill and seeing the truth about the world or taking a blue pill and continuing to live in ignorance. The terminology has since been adopted by a variety of groups and subcultures to represent different ideologies or belief systems. In the incel community, the concept of different colored pills has been used to represent different levels of understanding or awareness about gender relations and sexual dynamics. Pilled, the act of accepting one of the pills as the truth. Blue pill is used to represent a continuation of the status quo and a belief in traditional gender roles and relationship dynamics. Purple pill, the stance of being neutral or on the fence with regards to gender relations. That is not on the manosphere side nor on the feminist side. In certain manosphere circles, the term is utilized in a pejorative way to refer to men who have internalized certain red pill truths, but still hold to certain blue pill ideals. Red pill is often used to represent an awakening to the truth about gender relations and sexual dynamics and a rejection of mainstream cultural narratives around gender and relationships. Black pill, a term used to describe a nihilistic or defeatist attitude towards relationships and sexuality. Many incels who have become disillusioned with the idea of finding romantic partners may adopt a black pill worldview. White pill, the acceptance phase of the black pill, where incels seek to use black pill knowledge to either improve their lives or to find ways of coping with being a male that is disadvantaged by factors the black pill discusses. Pink pill, the femsal version of the black pill that either inverts several black pill claims or otherwise asserts that women are disadvantaged in the dating market vis-a-vis -vis men. It is a femsal philosophy. The halo effect and the devil effect are cognitive biases that can shape our perceptions of people, products, or organizations based on a single positive or negative trait, respectively. These biases can have significant implications for social attitudes and behaviors, including in the context of the incel subculture. The halo effect occurs when we form an overall positive impression of someone or something based on a single positive trait or characteristic. For example, if we meet someone who is physically attractive, we may assume that they are also intelligent, kind, and trustworthy. The halo effect can create unrealistic expectations and lead to disappointment when those expectations are not met. The devil effect, on the other hand, occurs when we form an overall negative impression of someone or something based on a single negative trait or characteristic. For example, if we meet someone who is unattractive, we may assume that they are also unintelligent, unkind, and untrustworthy. The devil effect can lead to prejudice and discrimination and can create barriers to forming meaningful relationships. In the context of incels, the devil effect can contribute to feelings of anger and resentment if they perceive that women are judging them based solely on physical appearance and overlooking other positive traits. What is it about the incel subculture that can drive some of its members to commit such horrific acts of violence? One of the key features of incel culture is a sense of entitlement. Many incels believe that they are owed sex or a romantic relationship and they become increasingly frustrated and angry when they don't get what they want. Instead of focusing inward on why they have difficulty entering into a romantic relationship, they seek the easy path of projecting blame outward onto others, in this case, women. Then they generalize their anger, frustration, and hate onto all women and find solace in echo chambers which tell them that those women are the problem, that they themselves are wronged against, and that there is no point even trying to change their situation. In situations where there is no perceived chance of relief, humans throughout history have sometimes chosen to end themselves in an act of explosive savagery, lashing out at those they perceive to have wronged them, instead of being really honest with themselves and admitting they are the problem and need to work on themselves to resolve their own issues. Incels are following in this well-trodden path, not accepting responsibility and lashing out at others.
The lack of research into inceldom has contributed to difficulty in reliably identifying incel-specific violence and suicide risk factors. With that said, studies of mass murderers have revealed patterns of warning behaviors that raise concern for future violence. These same patterns appear among incels who have committed violence. Identification of leakage, or indications of intended violence to third parties, should raise concern for potential violence. Leakage can be verbal or via email, text, or social media. Incels who have committed or planned acts of violence have posted to forums, YouTube, and written and released manifestos. Therefore, it is important to identify leakage of intent to commit violence to prevent future violent acts. Incels appear to be at higher risk of suicide, including homicide suicide, than the general population. Incel forums are filled with references to roping and sewer fuel. Over half of the perpetrators of incel-motivated violence died by suicide or reported suicidal ideation during the incident. In conclusion, incels represent a serious concern for society, and a thorough evaluation of their mental health and risk factors is crucial to prevent further violent incidents. Jordan Peterson, a Canadian psychologist and author, has addressed the topic of incels, involuntary celibates, in several interviews and talks. He views incels as a symptom of a larger societal problem related to the disintegration of traditional social structures, particularly those around relationships and family formation. He believes that incels feel disenchanted and alienated from society because they have not been able to find a sense of purpose or meaning in their lives. This in turn can lead them to become resentful and potentially even dangerous. Peterson often emphasizes the importance of personal responsibility and self-improvement urging young men, including incels, to take control of their lives, find meaning, and strive for success. In one of his statements, he says, If you are a young man and no women are attracted to you, the problem is you, not the young women. Now go straighten your damn life out, clean your room, eat and exercise, take on some responsibility, and make yourself competitive in some domain of activity so that you can make yourself the type of person worth being attracted to. By following this advice, Peterson believes that young men may be able to overcome their feelings of isolation and bitterness. While Peterson does not condone or support the more extreme and violent aspects of incel ideology, he recognizes the need to address the underlying issues that contribute to this phenomenon. He calls for a more comprehensive understanding of the factors driving the incel subculture and the development of effective solutions to help these individuals reintegrate into society the growth of incel culture has sparked significant societal response, as many people are concerned about the movement's misogynistic and extremist views and the potential for incels to engage in violence. Here are some of the ways in which society has responded to the incel movement. Public awareness and education. Many organizations, activists, and community groups have been working to raise public awareness about the dangers of incel culture and to educate people about the movement's ideology and beliefs. This includes efforts to counter the spread of incel rhetoric and propaganda on social media and other online platforms. Law enforcement and legal action. In some cases, law enforcement agencies have taken action against individuals who have been involved in incel-related violence or extremist activities. This may include investigations, arrests, and criminal charges. Many social media and online platforms have taken steps to restrict or ban incel-related content and communities. For example, some platforms have banned incel forums, and others have implemented algorithms to detect and remove incel-related content. Given that incel culture is often associated with feelings of isolation, rejection, and hopelessness, some mental health professionals and support organizations have focused on providing support and resources to individuals who may be at risk of becoming involved in the movement. Many commentators and advocates have argued that the root causes of incel culture lie in broader cultural and social issues such as gender inequality and toxic masculinity. Addressing these underlying issues may be key to addressing the growth of incel culture in the long term. It is important to note that the societal response to the growth of incel culture is ongoing, and many people and organizations are continuing to work to counteract the movement's harmful and extremist views. Ultimately, it will require a coordinated and multifaceted approach to effectively address the issue of incel culture and its potential consequences. On incel forums and message boards, this sense of entitlement is often amplified, with members encouraging each other to blame women for their problems 
and to engage in extreme forms of misogyny. One of the things that's particularly concerning about the incel subculture is the way that it can provide a sense of belonging and community for these individuals. They may feel isolated and rejected by mainstream society, but on incel forums, they can find others who share their beliefs and frustrations. This can create a kind of echo chamber where extreme views are reinforced and normalized and where violent fantasies and plans can be discussed openly without fear of judgment or repercussions. It is essential to note that not all incels are violent, and the vast majority of those who identify as incels do not engage in extremist or violent behavior. Treatment is better than shunning this group. When treating incels, it is important to identify and treat underlying psychiatric comorbidities and to individualize treatment plans that focus on the individual's strengths and provide tools to reframe negative beliefs. Psychiatrists and other mental health professionals have a crucial role to play in this research. Understanding the psychiatric comorbidities associated with incels can help identify individuals who may be at risk of becoming radicalized and provide them with the necessary support and treatment. More research is needed to better understand this group and its potential for violence. Mental health professionals must remain vigilant in identifying individuals who may be at risk of becoming radicalized and provide them with the necessary support and treatment. By doing so, we can work to prevent further acts of violence and promote greater understanding and compassion for those who struggle with feelings of sexual rejection and involuntary celibacy. If you found this interesting, please let us know in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button and let others know about the video. It helps the channel tremendously. As always, take care and stay safe.